Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of life this morning. Thank you that we all got through the week, Lord, and thank you that there were things in this week that we had to deal with and um, things that we couldn't, that we needed to lay down before your throne, Lord, for you to sort for us. And, and we thank you, Father God, for those uh, that we are walking uh, a, a, a path with and, and on this journey of moving closer to you, Father God. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives and in their lives. Thank you, Father God, that in this week alone, I, I heard absolutely amazing testimonies of, of sons and daughters um, reaching out to you and touching you, Lord, and, and discovering a new side of you and, and hearing your voice and, and moving when you speak, Lord Jesus, and, and you rewarding them. And, and so we thank you for that, Father God. As we get into your word this morning, we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will continue to do his perfect work in our lives as the true counselor, as our helper to to prepare the soil, Lord, for the seed of the word of God that's going to be sown. That that seed will fall on good soil, that it will shoot root and start to grow and produce fruit according to your will, your plan, and your purpose. So we thank you for that, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. In Jesus' name, we pray this and all God's people says, Amen, amen and Amen. Again, good morning, family. Um, I want to start off before we get into what is the second part of Revelation uh, chapter 8 this morning. Um, just want to start with a, a, a small little testimony. It might not mean anything to anyone, but I feel led this morning to give it, so I'm going to. Um, in the evening service, the, the Lord has been sharing with us on how to hear His voice. And there's been a group of us that has been taking this, this journey together and we've been moving together and we've been um, texting each other and, and, and we've been visiting with each other and, and sharing with each other what the Lord has been doing and saying and, and it's been absolutely amazing, especially in my life to, to see that sons and daughters of God um, take the word of God and, and move with it and they are starting to move closer to the Lord. It's exciting because I've heard testimonies in, in this week that cannot come from humans. It was only the Lord that did that. And so the Lord was so good. One of the things that I've been praying for since I met the Lord and, and especially when we started this teaching on how to hear the voice of God was I, I've been laying before the Father and asking the Lord, please Lord, I pray that that, that you will keep me humble, always keep me humble, keep me on my knees, keep me where I should be, that I will never um, exalt myself, that I will never uh, see or think of myself above anyone else. Or, or and, and so the Lord has been doing things like that, and, and, and He's been doing it in a way that is personal to me, that, 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 that relates to me, that I can uh, learn from. So early on in the week, one of my brothers in Christ invited me to have a Bible study with him. Absolutely amazing. Revelation after revelation and testimony and blessing. It, it, was, it was awesome. And the same time his wife took Sharice and they went and they did girly things and, and they, they were, were, were blessed. And, and afterwards they came back into the house and I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited to see my wife, I jumped up and I, I drop kicked one of their dogs. So much so that the dog did a handstand and, and right there I, I, I felt very humbled, very. Because they are good people and you don't walk into good people's houses and kick their dogs. Anyway, they, they, were, they are so close brothers and sisters in Christ, we all had a laugh about it. There, when I got in the car, I had a good cry about it. But um, yeah, so things, things that, that that we pray for, just know that the Lord does it. Um, and just a, a disclaimer before we get into Revelation eight: if anyone uh, wants to invite me for a Bible study, just hide your pets, please, because who knows what I'm going to do next? <laughs> I might slap a parrot or sit on a cat. So there we go. Okay. 
Revelation chapter 8. We went through the first part um, last week. And so we ended with um, verse 6, and we're picking up in, in verse 6 this morning. I'm first going to read um, from verse 6 to verse 13, and then we're going to go back verse for verse to see what the Lord shows us in this. Oh, this was my point with this. Family, what we are going to read this morning in the second part of Revelation chapter 8, um, if this that the Lord reveals to us does not humble us, it's a clear indication that our heart is as hard as granite. That's it. If this second part of Revelation chapter 8 does not humble us and, and cause us to realize where we belong, and that is at the feet of the Father, then nothing else will. Okay, so, chapter 8 verse 6, Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came a hail of um, uh, fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on earth. A third of the earth was burnt up, a third of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned to blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died. A third of the ships were destroyed. Verse 10. The third angel sounded his trumpet. A great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on the third of the rivers and the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the water that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark, a third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Verse 13, we will end with this, this morning. As I watched, I heard uh, an eagle that was flying in mid -hair in midair call out in a loud voice whoa 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to sound by the other three angels now we're going to go through this uh, verse by verse and again family i i i said this a few uh, weeks ago there's uh, new faces sitting here this morning so i want to say it again i am going to miss a lot as we go through the book of revelation um only because what we share here from the pulpit is what the lord god almighty wants us as the body of christ here in Altham baptist church to know amen so whatever Kenneth Copeland said about Revelation 8, or whatever Joyce Myers said about Revelation 8. That's an extra to you. Amen? But what we share here is what the Lord wants us as a family here to, to, to know. Just like accents differ all over the world, yeah, the Lord works in different ways with different people, different cultures. Does that make sense? Yes. So when the Lord speaks to... Um, uh, American pastors is speaking to the American people in what they are going through. Let's have a look. Revelation chapter 8 verse 6. Uh, sorry, Brother Brian. Thank you. Um, so we are going to be discussing this morning the seven trumpets. Can we have the next one, please, Brother Brian? Yeah, this one's clicking over quicker. Okay. Um, uh, 8 verse 6, it says, And the seven angels, which had seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Now, we, we ended with this one last week. These angels were already prepared to sound these uh, trumpets. The Lord didn't have to call them, and they, they, they had to get them together. They were already prepared for what is going to happen. And the Lord shared with us last week that, that is ultimately what we as sons and daughters of God should always be is prepared. Because no one on the face of this planet 
can say when the second coming of Christ is. No one. It's going to be a surprise. And so we have to be prepared for it. Brother Brian, please, the next one. So 8 verse 7 says, The first angel sounded, and there followed, look there, three things, hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Now, the next uh, slides that I'm going to show, family, is notes that the Lord gave me that I didn't want to forget. Um, because if you could climb in my mind right now, it's... <laughs> ooh. So, I put these down so that we can go through it together as a, a, a family. Please, the next one, Brother Brian. So, the first trumpet brings literal fire and hail and causes destruction of most of the vegetation on earth, which results obviously in famine and a lack of oxygen. Okay. Just think about this, family. A third of the, the, the earth. Now, remember what the scripture said. A third of the earth was burnt. A third of the trees were burnt. And then it goes on and says all the green grass was burnt. Not a third, all of it. Now, I'm not a farmer, and I'm not an expert in this, but there are farmers sitting here. If you have cattle and you have to lose all your green grass tomorrow, I don't know how long it takes for that grass to grow again, if ever it could grow again. Because let's say this that is being described here struck the grass and burnt it, and there was a chemical connected to it that caused the grass not to grow again. Mm -hmm. Family, have a look at what is happening here to the people that still don't want to listen to God. This is a warning sign from our Father in heaven to the inhabitants, this is what the scripture says, still on earth. For those that did not want to submit to the Lord, did not want to listen to the Lord. This is now happening here. A third of the trees were, were burnt up. The, 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 um, the one uh, down there, um, this may describe the um, eruption or part of the eruption of the volcano, the, the volcano that we saw in, um, in verse 5. So we ended with verse 5 last week where there was a massive volcano and this could be a result of it. The steam and the water thrown into the sky. Um, I had to go and do research on this. I'm, I'm not an a, a expert on this. Um, the steam and the water thrown into the sky by such an eruption could easily condense into hail and fall along with fiery lava. Now, let's have a look at Exodus chapter 9, 22. The next one, please, Brother Brian. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is in Egypt. Stretch out your hand towards the sky so that hail will fall all over Egypt on people and on animals and everything growing in the field. Look there. No mercy. Everything wiped out. Gone. Okay. Verse 23. When Moses stretched out his staff towards the sky, the Lord sent. Who sent it? The Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning flashes down to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed. If we didn't get the picture yet, this is the third time now. Hail and lightning, hail and lightning, like this, permanent. Family, that, that's terrifying that. Non-stop. And, and within most probably seconds... Because if the Lord sends hail, He sends hail. Most probably within seconds, everything was flat. Everything was ruined. And so, uh, verse is it? 24, hail fell and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Throughout Egypt, hail struck everything in the field, both people and animals, 
It beat down everything growing in the field. Now, I don't have the scriptures that follow because I want to urge you as brothers and sisters in Christ to go home and go and do some personal uh, Bible study. But the scripture that follows before this, that, that goes before this and goes after this, you will see that Moses went to the Israelites, the chosen people of God, and said to them, make sure that at this time, everything you own is under cover. Okay? A warning. Those that did not listen, this happened. So the people and the animals that were struck here included the Israelites that didn't want to pay attention to Moses. Does that make sense? And you can go and read it in the Word of God. He gives them a warning saying that make sure that you are undercover because this is going to happen now. The Lord is going to send this. And that, family, is a clear warning to us that the, the destruction that is going to come upon this world, if the Lord permits us to still be here to minister to them, if we are not attentive to His voice and listen to His instructions, we are going to be caught in that as well. We can see it with sin today. The Lord tells people in the Word of God to stay away from sin, otherwise it will cause destruction to you. A lot of Christians don't adhere to that. And they pull it to them and they cause destruction for themselves. Let's have a look, please, Brother Brian, the next one. The first trumpet, hail, fire, and blood, ice, um, and fire will rain from the sky, burning up a third of all the earth's trees and all of its grass. This will be an ecological disaster we have never witnessed before to this point in mankind. And I'm going to explain now why. Um, its result will be incurable. The second part of that, to make matters worse, John also adds that blood arrives in this hail and in this fire, just like the prophet Joel predicted. We're going to go there now, but I want to, I want to paint this picture, family. Let's say every single part of the North Island, let's say that's a third of New Zealand, every single part of the North Island, nature, Tomorrow with hail, gone, Boom. flat. Let's say there's a chemical mixed with it that cannot grow again. Okay. How long will it take us in the North Island before we frantically run around and start stealing from each other to survive? Think about this, family. You know, many times, I, I, I do this as well. Many times we speak against the, the um, movies that... Um, Hollywood makes about all this destruction you know the, a, a, a meteor hits and everything's wiped out and people start killing each other and we think oh yeah this Hollywood's they've gone off their rockers who's saying that they are not portraying visually to us what might be happening here that we are reading now and everyone is just oh that was a good movie that was a good movie Here's my question that you can answer to yourself. Hollywood is satanic in, in everything it does and says. Okay. Can the Lord still use Hollywood to speak to us? Yes. The Lord can do whatever He wants to do. You go through the, the Word of God. The Lord even used ungodly kings in the Old Testament to give messages to His people. And so, can you imagine, family, the whole North Island struck with this? No grass, no trees, no plants, uh, no vegetables. The vegetables that you are growing for yourself now, that, that's gone. Everything flattened. Hey, now there's a panic like we did not experience in the past two and a half years, where people went out and bought truckloads of toilet paper. They're not going to focus on that now. They're going to run... And they're going to, to they, New World, Pack and Save, Countdown, wherever there's food, 
People are going to go off their minds trying to get that food. Especially the good people sitting here this morning that are growing the food for us. They know how difficult it is. We think, oh, they wake up four o'clock in the morning and whoop, whoop, all the cows are milked and shalana and they, no, family, it, it's rough for them. It is. I'm the first one to admit it. I'm man enough to say that our farmers sitting here this morning are most probably the hardest workers sitting here this morning. And they the ones keeping us alive. But now, family, the gift and the talent that they have been blessed with, now that's taken away. Not because of them, because of this ungodly world that doesn't want to listen to our God. What are we going to do now? Now, let that mull around in your mind a, a little bit while we go to the next. This was prophesied in the Old Testament. Please, Brother Brian, the next one. This is the prophet Joel states here, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Even Joel spoke about this. The next one, please, Brother Bright. Ezekiel, another prophet, spoke about this as well. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon his many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Listen what is being described here, family. Now keep in mind that this is going to be this that we read in, in um, Revelation chapter 8 right now. This is going to be a storm that we as humans have never seen before. Three, two, three weekends ago, coming back from Hamilton, we were caught in floods. In the middle, we had to drive through it. And I was terrified, family. Uh, terrified. And that, that was just a flood. And when I say just a flood, I'm not belittling it. Because there are still people that are still trying to recover from what happened a few weeks ago in Auckland. I cannot imagine stepping into some of those people's lives. I can't. We've still got everything here. Some of those people lost everything in two days, family. Two da it didn't take two months. It took two days. This that is being described to us here is, is a one-shot happening. This could be in an hour. This could be in eight hours. But in a blink of an eye, a third of the earth could be wiped away. If we go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. This all that we have read now is only the first trumpet. The second trumpet turns a third of the sea into blood, and a third of the sea creatures and the ships are, are, are destroyed. Let's, let's get into that. This is going to be an eye-opener, family. Revelation chapter 8, verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and it... And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. Next one, please, Brother Brian. As it were, a great mountain. Now again, this is, um, this is our brother John sitting in Patmos. He doesn't have TV, can't watch Hollywood movies. So he might not know what a meteor is. So he's describing it as something that looks like a mountain falling out of the sky full of fire that describes a meteor. Amen. Probably a huge meteor or asteroid surrounded by gases that will ignite as it enters into the Earth's atmosphere. I sound clever now, eh? <laughs> it's, it's only how I sound. I don't have knowledge in this. I went and studied a bit of it. Okay. Its impact will create a tidal wave destroying one-third of um, what will be in the ocean. Now, let's have a look at this, family. The next one, please, Brother Brian. Revelation 8, verse 9. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. Before we go to the next clip, the Lord has been speaking here in these two um, verses about nature, okay? So earth was destroyed, and then the trees were destroyed. 
And then grass was destroyed. Now the Lord comes here and he says, and the creatures, the living creatures in the water, was the, and then the Lord moves to the first non-living thing. He says, ships. What? Why? Why did the Lord put a non-living thing in there? Plain and simple, family. Let's have a look at this. The next one, please, Brother Brian. This, this is pointing to a global calamity that is going to affect the commerce. The greatest, most powerful, and I'm not giving him credit, it's the world that speaks like that. The biggest, most powerful, false god walking around on this earth today is Mammon, the god of wealth, the god of money. Biggest god. You won't find a bigger god than him. Hollywood is driven by Mammon. Okay? Um, most big organizations, I don't want to edit this video, so I'm not going to mention them. They are driven by, by mammon. Okay. And so God is a jealous God. Not like we know jealousy. God's a jealous God. When he loves us, he wants us for himself. But now we prostitute ourselves out to the world every now and then for the good that this world can give us. And so now the Lord is coming and he wants to destroy that one thing that's taking people away from him. Does that make sense? Let's have a look how this is a possibility. Global demand for seafood destined for human consumption is 154 million tons a year, which accounts for tr $3 trillion money. Huh? Those poor fishermen that are fishing for this stuff, they don't get paid that $3 trillion. They just get paid enough to survive. Now, a third of 154 million tons is 51 million tons, which means that if this happens, the whole of China can't eat fish. A billion people, family, just like that. No food for them. Can, can we see here, family, that we are not dealing with the municipality that cut off our, our water supply or our electricity? This is huge. This is something that will affect billions of people. Let's have a look further. Why, why did the Lord speak about ships? 11 billion tons of goods is transported every year by ships. If a third of the ships are taken away, a third of 11 billion is 3.8 billion tons. I went and I did my research again. I'm not the, uh, you know, the, the clever educated one. So I, and I found this. 3.8 billion tons accounts for all of New Zealand, all of Australia, and all of um, South America's imports every year. <laughs> Blink of an eye, nothing gets imported into New Zealand anymore. Oh, and by the way, we don't have any grass to feed the cows anymore, so the cows are dying. Family, can you see what is happening here? If inside your spirit you are not screaming by now, Lord Jesus, please, I want to be right with you. <laughs> then let's go on. Maybe the next ones will coax us to scream that. Please, Brother Brian, the next. Revelation 8, 10 to 11. And a third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon a third part of the rivers... And upon the fountains of the water, and the name of the star was called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died because of the water. Now, all of our nature is wiped out. Okay? We can't have fish anymore because that's wiped out. So the cattle that have still been living, we've butchered them and we've eaten them. We can't eat fish anymore. We can't import anything into New Zealand anymore. Okay. Whew. Thank the Lord Almighty. We've still got rivers and streams. There's still life in them. Look there. A third of the rivers and the streams are now poisonous. Okay. Which ones? Who's going to test them for us? Family, wow. 
I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be here when this happens. If the Lord chooses for me to, to use my big mouth to keep on preaching, I'll do it. But this family is going to be terrible. There are, there's a group of people in America, they are called doomsday preppers or something like that. They, they've built underground bunkers and, and, and they've stored food and they've stored blah blah and they've what and what for, for if a war breaks out. So they, the, the one part they've got right, the other part... Uh, but family, when something like this happens and that food runs out, what do you do then? This is the thing. Okay. Can I give everyone a hint? What could be done if you are a believer, not a Christian, if you are a believer in Jesus and you are still here when this happens, can I give you a hint of how to survive? Remember when Elijah was in the desert and the Lord fed him how? With ravens. Huh? That man ate well. He ate meat. And the Lord brought it to him. And by the way, it's because Elijah had an amazing relationship with Jesus. Can we put the two together? Yeah. Do we know Christ? Not know of him. Do we know him? Does he know us? And so the next one, please, Brother Brian. Again, I went and I did my research. I'm not a botanist. There, are, there, there, there is a botanist sitting here this morning that's got a lot more knowledge than I have. So I made sure that I did my homework on this. This is how wormwood looks. Okay, it's a bush or a tree or a shrub or, or, or a herb. And wormwood is a herb. And its oil contains a chemical, thujone, I think it's that, which is highly poisonous. Now, part of this wormwood you can use as medicine, but if you use the wrong part, wooden box, straight. And so, um, uh, uh, the oil of this wormwood is poisonous, and this substance in wormwood oil excites the nervous uh, uh, system and causes seizures. So now can you imagine this family, everyone's running to get fresh water after this has happened. You scoop fresh water, you drink it, an hour later you have a seizure and you die. No one knows what happened. Because you're not at the water, can you see the confusion that is going to happen here family? Confu and this is what, you go through the, the, the Old Testament in battles, you will see that the Lord, the Lord causes confusions in our, confusion in our enemies to defeat them. You can see it when Joshua and, and the Israelites were fighting the enemy. And Joshua needed more time to defeat them. And Joshua asked the Lord to make the sun stand still. What did it do to the enemies? Cause confusion. The confusion defeated them. The same with Gideon. Gideon took 300 men, went to the enemy's camp, blew the ram's horn. They were so confused. Go and read the story of Gideon. The enemy was so confused, they drew their swords and turned on each other and started killing each other. Huh? Confusion. You see what happens, family, when we step outside of faith? We defeat ourselves. Amen. And so this is natural wormwood. If we go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. Throughout the Word of God, there's stories of wormwood, Deuteronomy 29, so that there may be, uh, so that there may not be among you, man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go to and serve the gods of their nations, and that there may be, uh, not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. Listen what the Lord says here, family. You and I in our hearts can even um, house wormwood. In our hearts. How's that possible? By what we speak. We can speak poison, family. We saw it the past two and a half years. How much poison was not spewed in that time um, versus how much faith was spoken. The next one, Jeremiah 9. Therefore, thus says the Lord of the hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, 
I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. So it's spoken of, if we go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. Um, Proverbs chapter 5. For the lips of a, ooh, this one's dangerous. For the lips of a strange woman. Brothers in Christ, if you're sitting here this morning and you are married, only look at your wife. Amen? No amens. For the lips of a strange woman drops as honeycomb, and her mouth is smooth as oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a double-edged sword. Yep. That's a yep that. We can go through the Word of God, and we can see the Lord tells us that over and over again. He speaks to us as His sons, my boys, I've given you a spare rib, a helper. You look at her and her alone. Amen. No other woman. You're looking for problems that cannot be humanly solved. <clears throat> the next one, please, Brother Brian. An interesting thing that I found in my studies is that Chernobyl means wormwood. And we all know what happened in Chernobyl. It is still unlivable today. So let's take just that picture as an example of what might happen on earth, or not might, what is going to happen in these scriptures. Um, the next one, please, Brother Brian. This accident that occurred in Russia affected mostly communist countries. If you have a look at the countries around Chernobyl, it affected them because there was meat there that they could not eat anymore. There was milk that they could not drink. The water was untouched untouchable you, you couldn't touch that you as person could not live in that area i think it was at that stage for longer than 20 minutes there's anyone that's got more knowledge than me i think it was 20 minutes now i think it's an hour and then you're looking for problems um so the the, the second part of that many years from now they will still see results of this terrible accident. In some places, the radi radiation was a thousand times higher than it should be. And wormwood means bad water. Now, how many reports, family, have we not heard over the past, let's say, five years of water, running water, spring water, river water, that is bad. You can't drink it. You can't swim in it. You can't... Huh? More and more and more and more. So even our fresh water here on earth is being poisoned. And so we get to a point where this happens. What water will there still be for us to drink? Family, this is something that we, cannot, we can't with our minds start to imagine how bad this is going to be. We can't. We truly can't. I, I came from a country that just before we, we moved here, we had six hours of power cuts. No power whatsoever. Then the power would come on for two, maybe three hours, and then cut again for six hours. And that was torture, family. Because you're sitting in the middle of the night, eight o'clock or whatever, doing Bible study, and the power falls. Now it's six hours without power. Oh my word. I didn't go to, to town today, so I don't have any candles. What do you do now? Don't worry. You take your phone and you use the light on your phone. Oh my word. My wife was charging her phone. I forgot to charge mine. Family, if you've never been in a situation like that, you cannot describe to someone the inconvenience of just a power cut. That's all. And then when the power does come on, there isn't enough time to heat up the, the uh, is, is it called the geyser here, Brother Brian? The hot water thing merging. That, okay, we all know. <laughs> there isn't enough power or time to heat that up for you to have a hot bath before the power cuts again. So you are permanently hungry and cold because when the power comes on, you're doing other things and you forget to cook. Can you see, family? And that's just a power cut, eh? This is not what was described here. If, 
our, us as husbands and, and, and fathers have to leave our families somewhere and run out to go and find fresh water. How long is that going to take? And how are we going to know that it's fresh? Family, this is something that we cannot imagine. The next one, please, Brother Brian. Um, 8 verse 12. A fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the, the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, and that a third uh, of them turned dark. So, for the mathematician sitting here, a third of a day is four hours. So, picture yourself tomorrow losing four hours of daylight. Gone. Blink of an eye. You don't have it. Picture yours, and this is permanent. It's not daylight savings. It's not going to come back in, in, in three months. This is it. It's gone. Permanently. Oh, and by the way, that's why we don't have any nature around us. We don't have any cows to eat. The fish have been taken away. There's no imports coming into, into New Zealand. The water is poisonous, and now everything's dark. Family, are you screaming yet? Lord Jesus, please, <laughs> show me what I need to fix, please. I don't want to be here. Because if I haven't fixed what the Lord requires of me to fix, I will still be here so that these things can fix me. Amen? Because again, family, one thing that we lack on this earth immensely is discipline. Discipline has been taken away. And so we have been taught that we've got rights and if people tell us to do something, we've got rights not to listen to, to them. We can see it in the schools. We can see it in the younger generation. The younger generation is ruling the, the world. Whatever they say goes. The elder people, just, oh yes, my small child, I will do what you want. And now what happens is, here yeah, the Lord comes and the Lord causes discipline here. Because I can guarantee you, family, I couldn't find the scripture in the word of God, but I know what the Lord says to my heart. That while all of this is happening, there will still be prophets, teachers, preachers, evangelists running around on earth telling people, if you want this to stop, <laughs> bow down before the one and only God. If there aren't teachers, preachers, or prophets, there's going to be Bibles, family, that are going to be plastered all over this world. And they can pick them up and read. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, four hours of light gone. Boop, in a blink of an eye. We don't have four hours of light tomorrow. Please, uh, Brother Brian, the next one. Um, a fourth trumpet takes away a third of the light in heaven during both day and night. The light arrives... Um, f that arrives from the sun and the stars and the moon is reduced, this will immediately lead to fear. <clears throat> Can you imagine, family, your, your alarm goes off tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, to get up for work and it's still pitch dark? Can you imagine the first thought that's going to go through your mind? What? Who took the sun? Like, what's happening here? It, it should have been up four hours ago. Yeah? Fear. First thing that happens. And then, obviously, a lack of crop production if there wasn't a chemical mix with the first two things that hit and we can still grow crops. Now, for the botanists sitting here or the farmers sitting here, if you lack four hours of sunlight a day, is it going to affect crops? I don't know. I'm not a farmer. But huge. Brother Peter, huge. There we go. So now the clever people were running around and said, okay, we don't have fish anymore, we don't have this, 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 but this piece of ground, we can still plant crops, and they go and they plant it, and then this happens. Just to cancel the cleverness. And so, a lack of crops, and obviously a much lower quality of life, if there is going to be any quality of life at that stage on earth. Let's have a look what... The book of Matthew says, please, Brother Brian, the next one, Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the power of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, again, family, I, I, I didn't study this. I, I went and, and, and did a little bit of homework. If you remove the moon from the sky, 
just an hour a night, do you know what it does to the tides of the ocean? It, it, it's horrific. We don't even want to think about it. That's just one hour. If you remove the moon from the sky four hours a night, you are looking at natural disasters that in this world they have never recorded before. Oh, and by the way, that's why we don't have nature, we don't have food, we don't have this, we don't have that. Who is screaming? Let's go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. Luke 21. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. Yeah, this is what we just said now. Take the moon away, the sea goes wild. Yeah? Family. You know, this clever world with all its cleverness and, and, and all the, the, you know, the clever papers and the clever books that they write, where they say that, you know, the moon controls the tide, can they not think for themselves what the consequence will be if the moon is removed? And yet still they want to deny that God is alive or lives. Brother Brian, please, the next one. Exodus chapter 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards the sky so that darkness will spread over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. Yay, family. This is rough. This isn't like dark like you can feel your, your way around in the house. This is like dark like you can feel the dark. This is eerie dark. Can you imagine the fear in this, family? So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all Israelites had lights in the place that they lived in. Amazing, family. Um, let, me, let me translate this into modern day Christianity. Okay? Everyone who follows the Lord where he leads them will have light. Amen. The rest, three days, nada, nothing. We go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. <clears throat> it will get better in the end, family, don't worry. For those who are hyperventilating. <laughs> Revelation. 8 verse 13 as I watched I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpets that are now going to sound if these that just went now are so bad and the angels are shouting woe family we can our, our minds are too small we're going to get into that next Sunday. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's, uh, let's end on, on, on a high note, if we can. The next one, please, Brother Brian. The last three trumpets were especially severe as announced by the three uh, repetitions, repetitions of whoa, whoa, whoa. They will be directed towards the inhabitants of the earth, the unbelievers who are still alive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One for each remaining trumpet blast, although the first four trumpets were unimaginable. Family, do yourself a favor and your heart a favor. Go home and go and read Revelation chapter 9. Just to somewhat prepare yourself for what is going to happen next week. Amen. If these ones that we, everything has been wiped out. No food, no water. Um, there's darkness. The sea is, is, is going berserk. Okay? And now the Lord steps forward and says, oh, by the way, that wasn't the worst. Yeah. We can't grow crops. We, we, we're trying to... Get food to feed our families. Family, we can't play with the Lord God Almighty. We can't. And there's a dangerous teaching in charismatic churches these days that we can do what we want and the Lord will forgive us. That is, that is a 
false doctrine that. I, I, I'm yeah. proclaiming it today, family. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. What, what is it that the Lord is saying to, to us? Have a look at this, family. The next one, please, Brother Brian. Answer to yourself. Okay? Which one of those, top or bottom, is the lemon leaf? And which one of those, top or bottom, is the orange leaf? Answer to yourself. Okay? The Lord spoke to His disciples in pictures. The Lord speaks to me in pictures. Just so that I can fully understand what the Lord is saying. Because I'm not a... I don't have a doctorate degree. I'm, I'm not a highly educated, qualified, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm a plain and simple fisherman for Jesus that loves the word of God and loves to, to preach it. So the Lord uses pictures. And this is what the Lord showed me. And I would like to pass it on to my family in Christ today. One of those leaves is a lemon leaf. And one of those leaves is a, a orange leaf. Okay. If you are not educated in it, like me, you would not see the difference. They both look exactly the same. Okay? They both look exactly the same. But, here's the difference, family. Off of the one tree, you get sour fruit. Off of the other tree, you get sweet fruit. They look the same. Yeah? They look exactly the same. But the fruit that they produce, totally different. Totally different. What's the Lord saying to us about that? Please, Brother Brian, the next one. Matthew 7. Beware, brothers and sisters in Jesus, beware of false prophets who come to you Dressed as sheep. Beware of people that come to you dressed as Christians. Watch out for this family. It's everywhere. I know I've been working in churches for 32, I almost said 32. Ooh, 23 years. I know this is true because I've witnessed it. I've heard it. Beware of people. It walk around dressed appropriately, okay? But inwardly, so again, what they display outwardly looks like an orange tree. It looks like something sweet. It goes further and it says, they are wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Amen. That's how we will know each other, family, by our fruit. Words can, can be deceptive. You can, you can speak a, 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 a good sentence, but live that same sentence. And, and that is what I, as a, 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 a man of God, has always tried to get through to God's people, is family. If you want to sit in a church and criticize disciples of Jesus, make sure you first bring disciples that you made for Christ with you to show us that you can do it better. And so here we can see by their fruit, family. And, and, and when I say this, some of us might go, oh yeah, that, that, that's right. Maybe you've got an uncle or an aunt in your family that when someone outside of their presence mentions that uncle or that aunt, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, no, that, whoa, no, he's horrible. Yeah, why? Because that's his fruit. He shows it to everyone. Amen? But then you've got someone in your family that if you mention their name, they say, whoa, there we go, disciple, that's it. I've never caught them do anything or say anything outside of the word fruit. Amen, family? And so a good tree cannot, cannot, Jesus himself said this, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. 
If we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we are temples of the Holy Spirit and we say yes to the Holy Spirit, we cannot have bad fruit. We can't, family. Why? Because Jesus said so, cannot. And then it goes further and it says, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Stop listening to people when they say this guy that's an atheist, the outside of the church, that's always cussing. He's a good guy. That he's going to steal from you, family. He's going to cause you to move away from the word of God. Because the Bible is true. He cannot have good fruit. Yes, maybe. Maybe. Some of the things that he does in the community looks good. But if you deep, dig deep into his heart... The motive is for him to receive something. That's it. And so it says, um, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by your fruits, you will be known. Amen. Let's have a look at the very last scripture. See what this does to our hearts. It goes further and it says, not... Everyone, did we read that right, family? This is Jesus saying this. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. He has the two types of leaves. People that are clothed correctly, okay? And people that sound as if they speak correctly. Because there's many people that run around and say, the Lord said this, the Lord said that, the Lord... But if you take what they said, the Lord said, and match it up with the word of God, it's nowhere to be found. And the Lord will never move or speak outside of his word. Amen? Amen. And so not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom, but does the will of my Father, fruit, does the will of my Father, many will say, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not do this and that in your name? Yep, you did it. And because of the name of Jesus alone, there was miracles. But Jesus says, depart from me, you who are lawless. I don't know you. I sat and I asked, Lord Jesus, if someone uses your name okay, to perform miracles, but they don't know you, how is that lawless? Jesus says it's, it's blasphemous. It's blasphemous. They are using the name of Jesus so that people can point to them and say, that pastor at that church, the pastor at that church can heal. The pastor at that church can cast out demons. Amen. Family, this is what happens. I know this. I, I've been in this long enough to know what people think and what people say in a church setting. And so because of the name of Jesus, there was healings. There's a, a scripture in, in, in one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, where the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, we must stop those people. They are healing in your name. Jesus said, leave them. Leave them as long as they're using my name. Yeah? And the, the healings are taking place. And I'm still here. People can still point to me. Yeah? Go and read that piece. Okay? So the name of Jesus carries the power. But if we are connected to Jesus, that's when Jesus knows us or not. Now, this is the question that we are going to end with this morning before we go and have a yummy lunch. And all just breathe a little bit. Family, going into this week, somewhere along the line in this week, ask yourself, does the Lord Jesus know me? The answer is yes. Obviously, he knows. But then I can go further and I can say, Lord Jesus, what part of me do you know? Do you know the, do you know the, 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 the part that, that lies? And it uses your name for my benefit. And, and it takes the gospel to, to be able to, to gain wealth off of it. Do you know that part of me? Or does that part not exist? And this is, family, this is a scripture 
out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If it was not important, Jesus wouldn't have put it there. And he made it clear to us, family, clear, clear, crystal clear. There's nothing that is not understandable here. Not everyone who says, Lord, will enter into my kingdom. Jesus is saying here, not everyone, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it now and bring it into today's language. Not everyone that walks into a church and says, I'm a Christian, will enter into the kingdom of God. They won't, we won't, family. Only those who do the will of my Father. What is the will of my Father? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your spirit. And to love your neighbors as you love yourself. Look what the Lord is sharing there with us, family. That whole command is pointing away from me. Amen? It's pointing away from me. It says, I must love the Lord my God and then love my neighbor. And once we start, because this is what this world is teaching, is that we can, we can do it. Man, we've got the power to, 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 to do. There's lots of motivational speakers. And, and, and I've seen their, their videos where there's a power lifter with big muscles. And says, you can do this. You can do this. You. And there's this scrawny little guy standing at, at, watching the YouTube video thinking, yes, I can. <laughs> Family. We can do absolutely nothing, not even take our next breath, if it is not for Jesus. We must make our minds up there as being the absolute truth. I cannot speak a next sentence if it were not for Jesus. I cannot think a next thought if it was not for Jesus. We are here because of him and for him, family. And so if this piece of scripture did not wake us up to go home and fall down on our knees and say, Lord Jesus, I, I am sorry, please, please help me to get ready and get right. Um, if this part didn't do it, um, then come next week, family. That's, that's going to be a, a, a humdinger. It's, uh, that one's going to wake us up if you haven't read it yet. So let's go into this week, family. Let's ask ourselves, especially ourselves, does Jesus know me? Do I know Jesus personally face to face um thank you let's let's end in prayer father god we thank you lord for your word and 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 we thank you that in your word lord you teach us that the truth of your word is is like a double-edged sword lord it severs bone and marrow it, it cuts tendons it it operates on us lord and while the word of God is being ministered, whether it is by a preacher or a teacher, or whether it is by the Holy Spirit, while it's being ministered, sometimes, Lord, it, it hurts a lot. It's agonizing, Lord Jesus. But it's because, Lord, you are busy severing the, the, the sin and the bad and the world from us, Lord. Right after that, Father God, the truth of the word of God, the bread of life, will then revive us again and cause us to have life and life in abundance. Thank you, Father, for each one of your sons and daughters that are courageous enough to sit here this morning and to hear this word, Lord, which is not an easy word to give or to receive. But I thank you, Father, that if but only a handful is sitting here and is saying, Lord Jesus, this is me, I, I, I cannot... I've seen the truth of your word. I don't want to go through that, Lord. I'm not going to be able to survive. Please, may I be ready. May, may my lamp be lit. May I be dressed in, 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 in the clothes um, of, of the, the, the wedding garment, Lord. And may I be ready for when you return, Lord Jesus. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. Lord, as we, as a family, can sit down now and enjoy a meal together, a meal that a lot of other people cannot enjoy, Lord Jesus, we pray that we will do it with gratitude towards you. We pray that you will bless the food to our bodies and bless those that prepared it. And we pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.